What has to be remembered is that the character created by Carlo Collodi is essentially a bad boy. He was brash, he was cocky, he was uh, kind of unlikable. He was uh, <laughs> a troublemaker. Walt didn't like that as he was shaping up, so he changed him. Hello, I'm Disney Dave, and welcome to my channel. Here, you can find things all Disney and Walt Disney World. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified when new content is uploaded. Walt Disney's 1940 animated classic Pinocchio may be celebrating its 80th anniversary this year, but its history goes back even further than the Disney movie. Not many know about the cartoon's original book roots, or just which famous voice got cut from the movie. Check out these 30 facts about the popular wooden boy and his story, and I promise I won't tell you any lies. Number 1. Like many other Disney movies, it was based on a book. The Adventures of Pinocchio was a children's book by Italian author Carlo Collaldi, and originally published in 1883. If you think the Disney version is dark, you should read the original. Pinocchio is stabbed by assassins and hanged halfway through the book, though he is later rescued and turned into a real boy by the child with the blue hair. Number 2. The name Pinocchio literally means little wooden head. Number 3. In the original book, Pinocchio throws a mallet at Jiminy Cricket, who was known only as the Talking Cricket, and kills him although he does come back as a ghost later on in the book. Nonetheless, Walt included him and decided to let him live. He came up with the name Jiminy and the idea to make him wear clothes and walk and talk like a person. Number 4. The original budget for the movie was half a million dollars. The development of the movie caused it to go way over budget and ultimately cost 2.5 million dollars and one of the most expensive movies produced at the time, costing twice as much as Snow White. On its initial opening run it made less than $2 million. Number 5. Some theorise that the movie did poorly initially, it's because it was so grim. Pinocchio is terrorised throughout the movie and the villains who tormented him get off unpunished. Number 6. The studio thought highly enough of the movie's visual artistry that it staged exhibitions of the original artwork at the Brooklyn Museum and two of the New York galleries to coincide with the movie's Big Apple premiere in February 1940. Number 7. The movie eventually made a profit during its re-release in 1945. Disney would re-release the movie back into the cinema a total of seven times between 1945 and 1992. To date, the movie has taken over $160 million at the box office. Number 8. Pinocchio was the first Disney feature available on Disney DVD. The 60th anniversary edition was released on October 25, 1999. Number 9. Pinocchio won two Academy Awards and holds the distinct honour of being the first Disney movie to win an Oscar for both musical categories. Best score and best song for When You Wish Upon a Star. The next time this would happen for Disney was in 1964 with Mary Poppins winning both categories. When You Wish Upon a Star has also been used at the start of most Disney movies since 1985. Number 10. Pinocchio's Nose Growing This is the first thing that people think about when they hear Pinocchio, but did you know this only happens once in the entire movie? Number 11. The movie was originally going to take place around Christmas time, which meant that it would also be snowing. Walt Disney decided against the setting because he did not want a holiday movie and preferred the movie to be enjoyed all year round. Number 12. Animators were unsure how to draw Pinocchio. 
Animators struggled for 18 months on how to draw Pinocchio due to them not knowing if to draw him with wooden movements or human movements. It wasn't until animation director Milt Kahn, one of Disney's nine old men, decided to blend both ideas, giving Pinocchio more human-like motions but also adding puppet-like joints to the mix. Number 13. Figaro the Cat was Walt Disney's favourite character. Though Figaro is a relatively minor character in the movie, Walt loved the cat so much he found him another role on completion of Pinocchio as Minnie Mouse's pet. Minnie already had a pet cocker spaniel, but the spaniel was ousted in favour of Figaro. Number 14. Production for Pinocchio started three to five years prior to the movie's release, and it took around 800 artists to get the movie to its final stage. Number 15. The August 1993 issue of Playboy noted 43 instances of violence and other unfavorable behavior in the movie, including 23 instances of battery, nine acts of property damage, three slang uses of the word jackass, three acts of violence involving animals, two shots of male nudity, and one instance of implying death. Number 16. Working models for all of Geppetto's cuckoo clocks were built as guides for the animators. It is said that they did it partly because Walt would look at some of the designs and say, oh, that would never work. But they would build the models to prove him that it would. Number 17. Things originally got dark in the whale scene. It is said Geppetto and his cat Figaro got so hungry in this scene, they considered eating their pet fish, Cleo. Eating Cleo. Imagine eating, mm, eating Cleo. Yes. Number 18. According to the 1938 New York Times article, Walt Disney tossed 2,300 feet of footage representing five months of work because it missed a feeling he had in mind. Number 19. It took 12 Disney artists 18 months to come up with a look for Pinocchio that Walt Disney approved of. Number 20. Cliff Edwards auditioned for the voice of Pinocchio, but the 43-year-old had too much grown-up in his voice, so he was cast as Jiminy Cricket. Mel Blanc was originally cast for the voices of both Geppetto's pets, Cleo the goldfish and Figaro the cat, but his lines were cut when it was decided both characters would be mute. He does, however, voice a single hiccup sound in the movie. Number 21. Dickie Jones, a 12-year-old who had appeared in Frank Capper's Mr. Smith Goes to Washington movie, landed the role of Pinocchio. He also voiced Alexander, one of the boys of Pleasure Island. Number 22. The voice of the fairy was provided by Evelyn Venable, an actress best known for her roles in Death Takes a Holiday and The Little Colonel, alongside Shirley Temple. She was also the model for the initial Columbia Pictures logo of a woman holding a torch. Number 23. Voicing the roars of Monstro the Whale was Thurl Ravencroft, later best known as the voice of Kellogg's Frosted Flakes mascot, Tony the Tiger. Number 24. Some two million drawings were used in the creation of the movie, 
300,000 of which appeared in the final print. Number 25. During the musical number When You Wish Upon a Star, when the spotlight is seen on Jiminy Cricket, you are able to see two books to the left of the screen, which are Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland. Walt Disney had started developing these two stories for the big screen at the time of the movie's release. Number 26. When Foul Fellow attempts to coax Pinocchio to go to Pleasure Island, he gives him a card with the ace of spades on it, calling it his ticket. In popular myth and folklore, the ace of spades is referred to as the death card. Number 27. To perfect Jiminy Cricket's human-like movements, the movie makers brought in an actor named Val Stanton and recorded him moving around on stage. Afterwards, they used a technique called rotoscoping to trace over the frames from the clip which they used as the inspiration for Jiminy's animation. Number 28. When Walt Disney picked up his Oscar statuette for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1937, he told the Academy Award audience about Pinocchio, which was still in production, holding their attention for a full 25 minutes. Number 29. The animators had a difficult time choosing how to animate Geppetto. Early models looked too much like Doc from Snow White, so eventually they decided to model him after the actor who voiced his part, Christian Rubb. Number 30. Amongst the nipping and tucking of the final movie edit, two longer scenes were taken out. One included an extended scene of Pleasure Island and the other was Geppetto telling Pinocchio of his grandfather, a pine tree. He stands up there on the mountain top, and for a hundred years he stood. His giant trunk to the sky it climbs, a mighty man of wood. The little birds, they visit him, bring birds from far, all so near. In Pinocchio's imagination, the birds are all made of wood, like birds that Geppetto might have carved. Their nests they build in his cozy limbs and practice songs of cheer. Thanks for coming along with me and hearing 30 facts about the Walt Disney classic Pinocchio. Don't forget, if you want more Disney movie content, as well as Disney Park features, please check out my channel. For notifications when I upload a new video, hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. Until next time, this is me, Disney Dave, saying goodbye.